Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at green roofs and we're going to design a green roof for a structure in Revit. So what I've done is I've Googled an image of some different green roof components and we're going to design a green roof with a parapet wall and kind of talk about the different layers as we design it. So right here, what I have is like a generic green roof that really needs some updating. So I'm going to go to uh, click on my roof and you select it by clicking on the boundary. Um, I'm doing this in 3D. However, you can do this in level one and do it as a, um, you know, a roof sketch, right? Same thing. Um, the main idea here is we want to select our roof and then go and edit the type of it. So we're going to click on edit type on this roof. We're going to duplicate what we have. And here I have generic green roof. I'm going to just call this one right now green roof with layers because we're kind of past the design stage in this project and we're ready to detail it out with a little more specifics. I'm going to withhold having my def my thickness on here labeled in the name because I'm really not quite certain where I'm going to end up yet. So I'm going to say OK. And so now I have a copied version of my roof that I can now edit. So I'm going to click on edit under structure. And under editing the structure, let's just say uh, I had like a metal like uh, K joist as like supporting this roof. So for the core boundary inside the structure, um, I could go and change that to some kind of structural components, or I could keep it somewhat generic. Um, here's where we could search for, let's say like, you know, some kind of steel uh, material. And um, we'd have to look into if we plan on saying that it's, you know, um, a K joist or not. Revit might be able to do some structural calculations based on that. So. If I go and type in steel, then let's just see if they have anything for joists. So they do have that steel bar joists. So I'm going to click on that because I'm going to use that for my main structure. If this is residential, you'll probably choose uh, like a soft wood material um, as that. And if it's a residential roof, like typical one, it's probably made out of two by eights. So you choose it to be seven and a quarter inches deep. If it's out of two by tens, it's going to be nine and a quarter inches deep. For this cage joist, I'm going to keep it at 12 inches. And then above that, I would have a steel decking. If this is a residential house, you would have about three quarter inch uh, plywood sheathing and you'd call that a substrate. So either way, it's a substrate. And I'm going to go through and call this a metal deck. Once again, if it's residential, you would choose uh, like three quarter inch sheathing or plywood OSB. And so on top of that, I'm going to insert another layer on top of the metal deck. I'm going to choose another substrate and I'm going to choose something that will create somewhat of a flat surface that then I can attach all of these things onto. All right. So the flat surface I'm going to choose here is going to be like a gypsum board. But this gypsum board, typically this kind, the normal one you would see inside a house would deteriorate with water. So what we're going to actually do is choose dense glass sheathing. So basically a gypsum board that's going to be reinforced with some fiberglass. And here you can see that um, fiber reinforced gypsum. We're going to add that up and we're going to basically make the assumption that this is made out of fiberglass with like a nice paper backing on it that stops water from getting in it. So I'm going to click on gypsum fiberglass and say, OK. And then here we're going to say that that is going to be three quarters of an inch thick or maybe five eighths. So I'm going to type in 0 0.625 for that. Um, once again, if this was a residential house, you wouldn't have this layer. You would just have the plywood sheathing. Um, but since the corrugated metal deck has little bumps and grooves in it, we want to turn that into a flat surface. Then I'm going to insert another layer above that. And this is where we start to get into these categories. So we have a waterproofing membrane, and then a root barrier. And then we have a drainage layer, a filter cloth, growing medium, and our plants. So the plants, let's go from top to bottom here with a quick explanation. The plants are typically pretty small. You can have larger plants, but you might want to put like a structural column underneath those spots because they would get pretty heavy, especially if you want a tree on a green roof, which can happen, um, but you would need it to be much deeper for the roots to grow as well. So the growing medium would have to be thicker and you'd have to have a really good root barrier and you have to have a column underneath. These plants are typically succulent plants, which soak up a ton of water. Um, and then our growing medium is going to be about three to four inches thick. And it weighs sometimes when it's wet, almost as much as concrete. So it is heavy when it gets wet. Then we have a filter cloth to help that 
earth drain out a little bit, right? Our roof is kind of like a bathtub where it can hold water and it stops water from getting into our building. And we want it to pitch towards a drain, but we don't want to just have soggy, basically mud up there all the time. So we have a filter cloth that allows the dirt to not pass through, but the water does. And then we have a drainage layer, which is kind of like uh, an area that has some cavities in it, kind of like a sponge that allows water to pass through it and pitch towards wherever our drains are on our roof. So that allows water to get through. Then we have a root barrier. So this is more of like the armor, the, the protective shell. So that way these roots don't drill their way all the way through into our building. Roots want to go where the water is. And since water keeps passing through to the drainage layer, roots are going to want to get into that layer. And they're going to also want to get into our building. Um, they don't know really when to stop. So this root barrier will stop them. It's going to act almost as like a rock surface. And then we have our waterproof membrane as a layer of protection. Um, just in case there's any imperfections and let's say this root barrier, maybe it's not perfectly seamed. Um, this would be like a rolled on tar or EPDM application, basically like almost the same application to my understanding that you would have on just a flat roof alone. So all these things kind of build on top of it. So with that being said, then here for my, my function, I have a membrane layer, which is going to be our EPDM material, which is going to be our waterproofing material. And this is oftentimes melted on. It comes in rolls and it's melted onto the roof. So EPDM roofing uh, membrane, I'm going to say OK. And membrane layers in Revit have to be zero inches thick. Um, even though this would still have a small thickness to it, we're just going to call it zero for now. Um, then we're going to insert above and we're going to have a roof barrier. So I'm going to just call it membrane layer. And I don't remember if Revit has a built in uh, like root barrier membrane, which I would doubt. So basically what we could do here is maybe just do some kind of vinyl. Uh, I don't really know if that would be the right material for it. Um, let's see, V-I-N-Y-L. And I'm just going to choose like a, a matte vinyl. Um, although I don't know if that would be enough for roots. It might be some other material. Um, we could even call it a substrate if we think it needs to be thicker and then add a thickness to it. Um, but I'm just calling it membrane for right now. Then I'm going to insert above that. We have drainage layer. So this is going to be a substrate. And the material, they might have a drainage mat. Mm, it's actually just drain. We'll put that in for now, even though I wonder, this is an actual drain. So we want to have like a mat and we'll see if there's anything that they have that would be right for us. Cellulose fill would be okay, I believe. Let's just go with like a fill for right now. Uh, we could look up specifics of that material later and adjust it. Um, but basically it seems like as of right now, it's kind of like a similar consistency to what a drainage mat would be. It's almost like a sponge. Um, and then uh, with some openings, um, sometimes they physically look wavy. So that way they legitimately have voids cut all the way through them. And we're going to make that two inches thick and say, okay, um, uh, not okay yet. We're going to go insert another one with filter cloth. So that'll be another membrane layer since it's re relatively thin. And once again, Revit doesn't have a lot of these things populated in. Um, so we're looking at something that's kind of like a screened uh, cloth. So I don't know if we can get like, uh, like a canvas would be pretty similar to it. Um, so we'll just add that material up and say apply and okay. Right now we're trying to find materials um, that would act you know, very similar to what we're trying to get here. We could rename, duplicate these materials. So for example, this canvas one, let's say we wanted to like make it a filter cloth based off of this material. We basically just go here to uh, create new material and whichever one I had highlighted, it should pretty much adopt. Um, so if I go back up to, let's see, canvas, or oh, we could just duplicate that as well, duplicate, and then we can call this filter cloth. 
and then we can make that the assigned material. So now it's um, labeled correctly in our layers here. And then same thing here with the cellulose fill, we could duplicate that one and call it a uh, drainage layer. So with cellulose fill, we're just gonna duplicate that since it has similar properties. And we'll just call it drainage mat, mat at one T, right? One T? Yeah. And then high and okay. And then uh, above the filter cloth, we have growing medium. So that's gonna be earth in our case. Uh, however, it could be almost anything. Um, that allows plants to grow inside of it. So we're gonna go up, and this is gonna be a substrate, and the material will be earth. And we're gonna say okay. And then the thickness of that, let's call it four inches, because uh, maybe we're gonna have some hardier plants, maybe some shrubs. And then above that, we're gonna insert one last one. We're gonna call it finish one, because it's gonna be on the top. And in the material category, we're gonna choose uh, plants. So we're gonna type in plants. And uh, if it doesn't have it, it does have it, it does have plant, you have to type in plant without the S. And then you have to look down here. If you can't see this stuff, this little guy expands it. Also notice I dragged out my window to actually see a little bit better. I'm gonna click on plant and say, yep, load that up into my project. With it up in the project, I click on that and then say, okay. And if you want to see it to be green on your project, make sure you go under appearance. Uh, make sure you have the image that you want. This is loaded in by default. Under graphics for shading, I like to use render appearance. So we steal the same green shading from the appearance uh, color when we go to shaded view. And then we can change the different patterns that we see and the colors that we see in these different modes as well. So that's one way to adjust that to show correctly on your project. So now that I have all of these things shown, I'm gonna say, okay. Um, and it, right now I'm getting one error. It says face layers must have a thickness. So I forgot to add a thickness to this plant material. And so let's just call that like two inches thick and say, okay, and okay. And so now we have the roof done. If I click off of it, you'll see that I have my green roof with all the layers on there. The only thing that we haven't done is uh, add in the parapet wall. So just to speak of that really quickly, a parapet wall is a wall that needs to extend from where your roof was created. So notice it's at like my roof line layer right here or my elevation for my roof line, okay, which was level three. And I have it as an unconnected wall that's about two foot eight. So it's about 18 inches right now above um, my actual roof. And there would be uh, some different like flashing connections to just make sure that any water that were to hit this wall would go over and onto and above the root barrier layer here or the membrane layer. So that way any water that would trickle down this side would not get underneath this membrane. So we would overlap it just like we would shingles on a house. And I have a detail of this in this project that I can go to at the very end of this video, but basically notice that this parapet wall is made where it's brick on both sides, whereas the wall below it is made where it has drywall on one side or some kind of interior finished material, and then it's exterior on the outside. So parapet walls end up being like a double-faced outside wall that just goes above at an unconnected height above our roof, and this makes it more like a bathtub. That way when it rains, your earth doesn't just fall off and make mud run down the side of your structure, which would be really bad. Okay, so to end this, like I had mentioned, I do have a view of a, uh, a section through this uh, wall. So to show you how like a parapet would typically get capped off, which is a level of detail you typically don't have to model in 3D. Um, I'm gonna go to, let's see, wall section. And this is kind of like what a parapet wall looks like at the top. And so you can see like the K bar joist that I had uh, done with the thickness, then our metal deck, and then um, our different materials kind of stacking up. And then here we have um, like a cap and this is that parapet wall. It just goes a little bit above and beyond um, the roof. And it would be flashed in here with a little more detail. All right, don't forget to save and subscribe if you liked that video. Uh, that's how you make a green roof.